numbers. This is denoted by capital W. The whole numbers are the natural numbers and zero. In set notation, we write like this. Capital W equals the set with elements starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. The next group of numbers is the integers. This is denoted by Z. The set of natural numbers, their negatives, and zero is the set of integers. We write this in set notation as capital Z is equal to dot dot dot. There are some numbers on the left side. So we start here with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Using the number line, we write in the middle the 0, and on the right side are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. These are the positive numbers. On the left side of 0, we have this negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And we call this the negative numbers. There are notes here. Number 1, a negative number is a number that is less than 0. We could write a plus sign. This is the symbol. Before a positive number such as positive 2 or positive 3. But it is customary to omit the plus sign and write only the number. If there is no sign, the number is assumed to be positive. Next group is the rational numbers. We denote this as capital Q. A rational number is a number that can be written in the form P over Q. Where P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to zero. In set notation, we write like this. Capital Q equals P over Q such that P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to zero. Numbers under rational numbers are 
integers. We have some examples, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Fractions. Examples, 4 over 5, negative 7 over 8, 13 over 4, negative 20 over 3. The decimals. But these decimals must be either stops or repeats. Examples are here. First example, 0 0.8. This is a decimal that stops. So this is a rational number. Another example, 2.1757575 and so on. We can see here a pattern of repetition on the 7.5. The three dots here means we can continue writing 7.5 on the right side of this decimal. So this is an example of a rational number. Another example, negative 3.25. This is a decimal that stops. So it is a rational number. Last example, negative 6.6. .6. Please notice here that there is a bar on top of the 6 on the decimal. We can write this into negative 6.666 and so on. So the bar there means we will continue write the 6 on the right side. Now, in our second example here, this example 2.1757575 can be written like this. 2.175 and there is a bar on the numbers 7 and 5. Example 1. Are the following statements true or false? Give reasons for your answers. Let's have statement 1. Every whole number is a natural number. This is false. Because zero is a whole number, but not a natural number. Second statement. Every integer is a rational number. This is true. Because every integer m can be expressed in the form m over 1. And so, it is a rational number. Statement 3. Every rational number is an integer. This is false. Because 3 over 5, a counterexample, is not an integer. Example 2. Find 5 rational numbers between 1 and 2. Since we want five numbers, let us write one and two as rational numbers with denominator five plus one. Therefore, it is six. So the number one can be written as six over six. For number two, this is 12 over six. Then the numerators six and 12, let us consider the numbers the integers between the 6 and 12 and write as numerator for new fractions using the number 6 as denominator. That will be 7 over 6, 8 over 6, 9 over 6, 10 over 6, and 11 over 6. These are all rational numbers between 1 and 2. When we simplify the fractions, we have now 7 over 6, 4 over 3, 3 over 2, 5 over 3, and 11 over 6. These are the answers. Notice that in example 2, you are asked to find 5 rational numbers between 1 and 2. But you must have realized that in fact, there are infinitely many rational numbers between 1 and 2. In general, 
there are infinitely many rational numbers between any two given rational numbers. For the numbers inside this square root that is not a perfect square is considered to be an irrational number. Example 1. Locate square root of 2 on the number line. Let us have this square O, A, B, C with sides 1. Then let us draw the diagonal OB. By Pythagorean theorem, we can compute for OB. That will be 1 square plus 1 square equals the square of the length OB. When we simplify this, OB is equal to square root of 2. On the number line, we put this O on the origin. Then we will use a compass, center at O, radius OB. Then we will draw an arc intersecting the number line at the point P. Therefore, OB is equal to that square root of 2 and that will be equal to the line segment OP. Example 2. Locate square root of 3 on the number line. With reference to figure of example 1, we will draw a right triangle on the number line such that we have the side OB as square root of 2, the side BD as 1. Then we will compute for the side OD. By Pythagorean theorem, we have the square root of 2, which is squared, plus 1 square is equal to the square of the length of the side OD. When we simplify this, the side OD is equal to the square root of 3. Then we will use a compass, center at O, radius OD, we will draw an arc intersecting the number line at the point Q. So, OD, that is the square root of 3, now equals OQ on the number line. Note that you can locate square root of n on the number line for any positive integer n. 
after the square root of the quantity n minus 1 has been located. Today we're going to study rational numbers and their decimal expansions. We have this case 1. The remainder becomes 0. Let's have this example 7 over 8. This is equal to 0 0.875. Another example 1 over 2 equals 0 0.5. Another example, 639 over 250 equals 2.556. In all these cases, the decimal expansion terminates or ends after a finite number of steps. We call the decimal expansion of such numbers terminating. Case 2, the remainder never becomes 0. One example here, 10 over 3. In decimal, this is 3.33333 and so on. Another example, 1 over 7. That is equal to 0 0.142857, 142857, 142857 and so on. When doing the usual division of numerator by the denominator, notice that the remainders repeat after a certain stage, forcing the decimal expansion to go on forever. In other words, we have a repeating block of digits in the quotient. We say that this expansion is non-terminating recurring. Some books will write this 3.3333 and so on with this notation. 3.3 .3 with a bar on the 3. That means the digit 3 is repeating. On the same way for this example 1 over 7, with this long list of decimal, we have this 0 0.142857 with a bar on top of all these digits. Meaning, this digits 142857 repeats. When we have another example, say 3.5727272 and so on. In this example, only the block or the digits 7, 2, repeat. So we write here 3.5 with a bar on the block 7, 2. To summarize, the decimal expansion of a rational number is either terminating or non-terminating recurring. Moreover, a number whose decimal expansion is terminating or non-terminating recurring is rational. Example 1. Show that 3.142678 is a rational number. In other words, express 3.142678 in the form P over Q, where P and Q are integers and q not equal to 0. We write the value here. Take note that the place value of 8, that is the last digit, is millions. So we write this number on top as numerator without the decimal. And in the denominator, we write million. This is the answer. Example 2, show that 0 
three 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 and so on equals zero point three with a bar can be expressed in the form p over q, where p and q are integers and q not equal to zero. We let x equals zero point three 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 and so on. In this case, since 3 is repeating or 1 digit is repeating, we will multiply this by 10. So the equation becomes 10x equals 3.3333 and so on. Note that this 3.3333 and so on equals 3 plus 0.3333 and so on. And this decimal here is equal to the x. Therefore, we can rewrite this equation as 10x equals 3 plus x. Then we combine all variables in one side. This x we transpose to the left. So we have 10x minus x equals 3. And the left side becomes 9x. That is equal to 3. When we divide this equation by 9, we have the x equals 3 over 9, and when we simplify, this is 1 over 3. This is the value of x. Example 3. Show that 1.272727 and so on equals 1.27 with a bar on the 27 can be expressed in the form p over q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. We let x equals 1.272727 and so on. Since two digits 27 are repeating, we multiply this equation by 100. So the equation becomes 100x equals 127.272727 and so on. Considering the original value as x, note that this 127.272727 and so on equals 126 plus 1.272727 and so on. Let us rewrite our equation as 100x equals 126 plus x. Then we combine all variables. This x we transpose to the left. So we have 100x minus x equals 126. The left side becomes 99x. Then we divide this equation by 99. So x equals 126 over 99. We simplify the fraction as 14 over 11. Example 4. Show that 0 0.2353535355 and so on that is equal to 0 0.235 with a bar on the block 3, 5, can be expressed in the form p over q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. We let the x equals 0 0.2353535535 and so on. Note that the digit 2 does not repeat and the block 3, 5 repeats. In that case, since two digits are repeating, we multiply the equation by 100. So equation becomes 100x equals 23.5353535 and so on. Considering the original value as x, note that this 23.5353535 and so on is equal to 23.3 .3 plus 0 
two three five three five three five and so on so let us rewrite our equation it becomes 100x equals 23.3 plus x let us combine the x 100x minus x is 99x equals 23.3 let us rewrite this 23.3 as a rational number so we have 233 over 10 when we divide this equation by 99 we will get the value of x so we'll have x equals 233 over 990 Today we're going to study decimal expansion of irrational numbers. The decimal expansion of an irrational number is non-terminating, non-recurring. Moreover, a number whose decimal expansion is non-terminating, non-recurring is irrational. Example 1. Prove that 0 0.10, 110, 1110, 11110, 11110, and so on is irrational. Notice that this number is non-terminating and non-recurring. Therefore, from the property given, it is irrational. Example 2, what is the decimal expansion of square root of 2? Square root of 2 equals 1.414-213-562-373-0950-4880-16887-2420-96 and so on. This is an irrational number. Know that it is non-terminating and non-recurring. Example 3. What is the decimal expansion of pi? Pi equals 3.141592653 two three eight four six two six four three three eight three two seven nine five zero and so on know that we often take 22 over 7 as an approximate value for pi but pi is not equal to 22 over 7 example 4 Find an irrational number between 1 over 7 and 2 over 7. Note that these two are fractions and they are rational numbers. So we are going to find an irrational number between these two numbers. Take note that we know that 1 over 7 is equal to 0 point. There is a bar on top of the digits 1, 4, 2857 meaning these are repeating and for the 2 over 7 the value is 0 point there is a bar on the digits 285714 there are infinitely irrational numbers that are non-terminating non-recurring lying between 1 over 7 and 2 over 7 an example of such a number is 0 0.150, 1500, 
Today we're going to study operations on rational and irrational numbers. Operations on rational and irrational numbers provide the following facts. Number one, the sum or difference of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational. Second, the product or quotient of a non-zero rational number with an irrational number is irrational. Third, if we add, subtract, multiply, or divide two irrationals, the result may be rational or irrational. See this example? Check whether 7 square root of 5 7 over square root of 5, square root of 2 plus 21, pi minus 2, are irrational numbers or not? Let's begin with the first, the 7 square root of 5. Before that, let us define the square root of 5 value. We know that this is equal to 2.236 and so on. Now, we multiply this value by 7. So, we have here the 7 is square root of 5. So, we will have 15.652 and so on. Next is the 7 over square root of 5. This is the division of the rational number 7 by the irrational number square root of 5. In here, we can show that we can rationalize the denominator. We multiply this fraction by the value square root of 5 over square root of 5. And by this, the denominator becomes rational and the value is 5. So we have the 7 square root of 5 over 5. It means this value here, we divide by 5. And we will get 3.1304 and so on. Next is the square root of 2 plus 21. Let's begin with the value of square root of 2. And that is 1.4142 and so on. Then we have this value now added by the rational number 21. So the square root of 2 plus 21, this decimal plus 21 will be 22.4142. Next is the pi minus 2. Let's begin with the irrational number pi. And the value is 3.1415 and so on. Then we subtract by 2. And the value now is 1.1415 and so on. All the values are non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. So, all these are irrational numbers. Today we're going to study addition and subtraction of radicals. First, let us define like radicals. Like radicals are radical expressions with the same index and the same radicand. Example, 5 cube root of 7 and 4 cube root of 7. So we see here the radicands are both 7 and the indices are both 3. So these two radicals here are like radicals. Take note, we don't care about the numerical coefficients. Let's go now to addition and subtraction of radicals. As a rule, in adding or subtracting like radicals, add or subtract the numerical coefficients and copy the same radical. In symbol, we have the a 
nth root of x plus or minus b nth root of x. The answer here is the a plus or minus b. And then we affix the common radical, the nth root of x. Take note that when radicals are not like, it cannot be combined. Let's have example 1. The 5 cube root of 7 plus 4 cube root of 7. Let us check the radicand and the index. So the radicands are both 7 and the indices are both 3. So these two are like radicals. So we can now add the numerical coefficients 5 plus 4. And then the common radical is affixed here. Next, we're going to simplify now the 5 plus 4. It becomes 9 cube root of 7. So this is our final answer. Let's have the second example. Square root of 20 plus 3 square root of 5. We can see here that the radicands are not same. In here, the radicand is 20. Here, the radical is 5. Although, the indices are both 2. Still, these radicals are not like. What we will do is to simplify the radical if possible. It means, in the first radical here, we are going to remove a perfect n square factor then later on the simplified form we will check again if this radical square root of 20 becomes like with the other radical now the 20 is now factored out into 4 times 5 so one factor is a perfect square and that is the 4 and then we just copy the plus 3 square root of 5 here. Then we're going to show that this 4, the perfect square number, is equal to 2 square. Then, we're going to distribute the radical sign to the 2 square and also to the 5. So we have here the square root of 2 square times the square root of 5 and then the plus 3 square root of 5 is copied down here. Next, we are going to cancel the radical sign and the power 2. Only the number 2 comes down here to be multiplied to this square root of 5. Then we'll just copy this 3 square root of 5 down here. Now we were able to simplify this square root of 20. Now becomes 2 square root of 5. So we can see that they are like terms now. It means we can now apply our rule in addition of like radicals. So we will add the numerical coefficients. 2 plus the 3. Then we copy the common radical, the square root of 5. So simplifying further, the 2 plus 3 becomes 5. And then this square root of 5 is affixed again. So this is our final answer. 5 square root of 5. Example 3, the square root of 32x raised to 7 minus the square root of 50x cubed. Obviously, our radicals are not like. The radicands are not the same. So what we'll do is to simplify both radicals. We're going to factor out the radicands of each of these radicals so we will be guided by this principle. For the number, one factor must be a perfect square. Since our index here is 2, so we're looking for a factor that is a perfect square. It means, in other problem, if your index is a cube root, you must look for a perfect cube factor. In the first radical, the number 32 is factored out into 16 and 2. 
for the variable x raised to 7, there is a clue here how to factor out that variable. It says one factor must have exponent of highest multiple of the index. Our index is 2. So the factors for x raised to 7 is our x raised to 6 and x. For the second radical, the 50 is factored out into 25 and 2. We know that 25 is a perfect square number. For the x cubed, factors will be x square and x. And then, we are going to show that this 16 is the same with 4 square. Then I copy the 2 here. For the x raised to 6, I'm going to represent this to be a value with power 2 because our index here is 2, but the value inside here must be x cubed. So checking here, if I multiply the 3 and the 2 powers, I will get back to that power 6. And then the x factor will just be copied down here. On the second radical, the 25 is now represented into 5 square and the rest we just copy down here. The next line is we're going to distribute the radical sign to each of the factors inside the radical. In the first big radical, we have now this square root of 4 square and then times the square root of 2 times the square root of the square of this x cube times the square root of x. For the second radical, we have the square root of 5 square times the square root of 2 times the square root of x square times the square root of x. And then, we're going to simplify further. In this first term here, I'm going to cancel the radical and the power 2. So you see, the only the base form will come down here. The square root of 2, there is no change. I will copy here. For this expression, I will cancel the radical sign along with the power 2. Only x cubed will come down. For the square root of x, there is no change. Then minus, for the second group, for the first term, I'm going to cancel the radical sign with the power 2. Only the base 5 will come down. The square root of 2, we just copy down here. For this expression, I'm going to cancel the radical along with the power 2. Only the x comes down. And the square root of x, there is no change. I will copy down here. So the next step is we're going to multiply all terms with no radicals and we will multiply terms with radicals. So the 4 will be multiplied to the x cubed, the square root of 2 times the square root of x. So we will have this 4x cubed square root of 2x and then minus 5 times x will be 5x and then the square root of 2 times the square root of x will be square root of 2x. Now on this line, we can now observe that we have like radical. It means we can now apply our rule of subtraction of like radicals. So we're going to add the coefficients of the radicals. In the first group, we have the 4x cubed as the coefficient and then minus. In the second group, the coefficient of the radical is 5x. So we'll now put them together, the 4x cubed and then minus the 5x. Then we will copy the radical, the square root of 2x. We cannot combine this 4x cubed 
minus 5x because they are not like terms. So we'll just keep it as it is. So this expression, the quantity 4x cubed minus 5x times the radical square root of 2x is the final answer. Hi everyone, today we're going to study multiplication of radicals. First, let us have the product property of radicals. Suppose there are two radicals here, the nth root of A and the nth root of B. Take note that the index are the same. And n, and that is the index, is greater or equal to 2. And the index is also an integer. Then, if we multiply the nth root of A by the nth root of B, the answer will be the radical with the same n index with the product of A and the B. So you see here, the answer is the nth root of AB. This equation here is what we call the product property of radicals. Let us apply that principle for some examples. Let's have this example 1. Find the product of the cube root of 6 and the cube root of 2. The formula is here. As per the requirement, the index must be same. As you can see in this problem, the index are same and equal to 3. So what we'll do is simply take the radicands, the 6 and the 2, multiply them together, and the final answer is cube root of 12. Let's have example 2. Let us find the product of the first term, 10, square root of 6, p cubed, times for the square root of 3p. I put the formula here on this side and there is a rule. We will multiply the numerical coefficients and multiply the radicals respectively. So in here I multiply the 10 and the 4 and that is 40 and for the radicals I must check first if the index are same. So both are square root, so we have the same index of 2. So we are to multiply now the radicands. So the 6 is multiplied to the 3 becomes 18. The p cubed times the p equals p raised to 4. So this is our answer. But I observe our radical here can still be simplified. So what we'll do, we're going to factor out 18 into two numbers such that 1 must be a perfect square. So that is 9 times 2. The number 9 is the perfect square number. For the p raised to 4, we're going to show that this is p square and again squared. After that, we're going to distribute the radical to each of the terms inside the radical symbol. So we have now first the 40 I copied here times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 times the square root of that p square and again squared. The next is we will show that 9 to be a 3 square value. And then we are now to Simplify further, I copy first the 40. On this term, I cancel the radical along with that power 2. So only the base 3 will come down. For the square root of 2, we simply copy here. For this term, we cancel the radical along with that power 2. So only the base p square will come down here. 
So on this point, we're going to combine all terms that are not inside the radical symbol. So this 40 will multiply to 3, also multiply to the p squared. So it becomes 120 p squared, and also the square root of 2 will be copied here. So this is our final answer. Let's have example 3. There are two binomials with radicals that we will multiply. The first group is 3 square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. The second binomial, the square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 5. As per the rule, we will multiply each term of the multiplicand to each term of the multiplier. So the first group is the multiplicand, the second group is the multiplier. So if I'm going to take the first term, I'm going to multiply this to the two terms of the other group. After that, I will take this second term of the first group, then multiply to all the terms of the second group. So let's start with the first term. The 3 square root of 2 is multiplied to this square root of 2. We will get this 3 square root of 4. Next, the 3 square root of 2 times 4 square root of 5. We will get this 12 square root of 10. Now for the second term, I will multiply this negative square root of 5 to square root of 2. I will get this negative square root of 10. The negative square root of 5 times 4 square root of 5 will have this negative 4 square root of 25. Then let us simplify the first term. The square root of 4 will be 2. Later on we will multiply to the 3. So the second term we copy also here. The third term also. For the fourth term we can simplify this square root of 25 to be 5. Then later on we will multiply to the number 4. On the next line, now is the product. The 3 times 2 is now showing as 6. Then for these two terms, they are like terms. They have the same radicals, same index, and also same radicand. So we can combine them. We will only combine the numerical coefficient. So this is positive 12, and this is negative 1. So it becomes positive 11, and then copy the same radical, square root of 10. Then minus the product of 4 times 5 is 20. And in here, we can combine the 6 and the negative 20 to be negative 14. Then we will copy this radical down here, plus 11, square root of 10. So this is our final answer. Let's have example 4. This is now the square of the quantity 4 minus 2 square root of 5. We can expand this binomial here to be 4 minus 2 square root of 5 times 4 minus 2 square root of 5. And then we will do the long multiplication. Start with 4 times 4 is 16. And then 4 times negative 2 square root of 5, we will get this 8 square root of 5. Next, the negative 2 square root of 5 times 4, we will get this negative 8 square root of 5. And then negative 2 square root of 5 times negative 2 square root of 5, we will get this 4 square root of 25. And then, we will simplify this square root of 25 to be 5. In the second term and the third term, we can see that they are the same radical. It means we have radicals of the same index and the same radicand. In that case, we can combine these two radicals in the middle. So, in the third line, we have this 16 here. And then combining these two terms, we have this negative 16 square root of 5. And then plus the product of 4 
and 5 is 20. So we can now add the 16 and the 20, it becomes 36. Then we simply copy this negative 16, square root of 5. So this is our final answer. There is another solution using a special product formula. So what I will do, I am going to solve this same problem using the special product. First, I am going to clear the board and then put the final answer on this side, the 36 minus 16 square root of 5. And I am going to use the special product, the square of difference of two terms. In the answer, we will have three terms. So it means the x minus y quantity square is equal to these three terms, x square minus 2xy plus y square. So for the answer here, I am putting here three blanks to represent the three terms for the final answer. The first blank here is for this 4, I copy it here and I put the power 2. Then for the second blank, I put these two terms here, the 4, and also this negative 2 square root of 5. So you see here the 2 square root of 5, the negative sign is already here. And then this number 2 here is a constant that we should always place. And the third blank is for this term negative 2 square root of 5 and we will put the power 2. So we were able to place all the necessary values. So we will now to simplify. The 4 square becomes 16 and then minus. Then the product of these three terms, 2 times 4 times 2 square root of 5, we will get the 16 square root of 5. And then plus, we are going to square this term because of the square, the negative sign will go away. The 2 here becomes 4 and the square root of 5 is square. The radical sign is cancelled with the power 2. So we will have the 5 only that will come here. Then we will simplify the 16 comes down then minus 16 square root of 5 multiplying 4 and 5 becomes 20. Then we will combine the 16 and 20. So this answer here is the same with our answer a while ago when we solve this using the long method of multiplication. Hi everyone, today we are going to study division of radicals. First, let us define the quotient property of radicals. Suppose I have two radicals here. The first one is the nth root of A. The second is the nth root of B. Take note that the index are same. And these two radicals are both real numbers. Another condition is that the B, this B is the radicand of the second radical here, should not be equal to 0. And for any integer n, and that is the index, should be greater or equal to 2. Then, if we are going to divide the nth root of A by the nth root of B, the answer will be a big radical here with index N. Inside the radical is a fraction with numerator A and denominator B. So this is the quotient property of radicals. Let's have some examples. Let us consider example 1. Square root of 15 over square root of 5. Obviously, our index are the same. So we can 
solve this problem using our quotient property. So this is equal to the big square root and the fraction inside is 15 over 5. So we can now divide the 15 by 5. So the answer is the square root of 3. Let's have example 2. The square root of 48a raised to 7 divided by the square root of 3a. This is equal to the big square root and the fraction inside is 48a raised to 7 over 3a. So we apply now the quotient property here. Next, inside the radical, we're going to group the coefficients and we're going to group the variable a respectively. We're going to simplify the 48 divided by 3. We will get 16. And the a raised to 7 divided by a, we can cancel that a in the denominator. We cancel the exponent 7. Then this will now be exponent 6. So in here, the answer will be the square root of 16, a raised to 6. The next is, the 16, we're going to show that this is equal to 4 square. And then for the a raised to 6, we're going to represent this by a value with power 2. And inside the grouping symbol is a cube. Next, we're going to distribute the square root into each of the factors here. So you see we have now the square root of 4 square times the square root of the square of this a cube. And then we can now cancel the square root and the square in this first factor. So only the number 4 will come in the final answer. Also with the second factor, we cancel the square root, also the power 2. Only the a cube will come down here. So the final answer is 4 a cube. Let's have example 3. We have here the cube root of 24 x raised to 8, y raised to 4, all over the cube root of 81 x square y. So we will apply our quotient property. So we're going to combine these two radicals into one big cube root. The numerator will be the 24x raised to 8y to the 4 divided by 81x square y. And then we're going to group the numbers together. We're going to group the x together, also the y's together. For the numbers, we are going to simplify this by factoring out a common number to the numerator 24 and to the denominator 81. So the 24 is now factored out into 8 times 3. The 81 is factored out into 27 times 3. For the x with power 8 in the numerator and power 2 in the denominator, we can show that this is x raised to the difference of 8 minus 2. And then times the variable y raised to 4 minus 1. So in here the exponent is 4. In the denominator for the y, the exponent is 1. Next, we can now simplify our coefficients. We can now cancel the 3, so only the 8 over 27 will come down. For the x, we have the 8 minus 2, we have the power 6, so x raised to 6. For the y, we have 4 minus 1 power, so we have now the y cube. Of course, they are all inside this cube root. 
The next is we're going to group together this 8x to the 6 and to the y cube. Put them all in the numerator. The next step is we're now going to simplify by quotient property. It means we're going to distribute this radical sign, the cube root, into the numerator and in the denominator. And then we're going to use the product property to simplify by distributing the cube root to each of the factors. So we have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of x raised to 6 times the cube root of y cube. Then in the denominator, still our cube root of 27 is there. We're going to show this 8 to be 2 cubed. For the x raised to 6, we're going to show that to be a power of 3. And then the x square will be inside this grouping symbol. So from here, we can now simplify. We can now cancel the radical and the powers respectively. So for the first term, we can cancel the radical with the power 3. So only the base 2 will come here. In the second term, we cancel the radical also with the, that power 3. Only the x square will come here. On the third factor, we can cancel the radical also that power 3. Only the y will come here. In the denominator, we can cancel the radical and also the power 3. Only the base 3 will come here. So for our final answer, this is 2x square y all over 3. Hi everyone, today we're going to study how to rationalize the denominator. First, let us define simplified radical expressions. A radical expression is considered simplified if there is, number one, no factor in the radicand having perfect powers of the index. Example here is square root of 20. This radical is not simplified because the 20 has a factor of 4 and 5. And this 4 is a perfect square number. The index is 2, so there must be no perfect square number inside the radical. So we're going to simplify this by simply putting this 4 outside the radical sign so it becomes 2 and then the square root of 5. The second, a radical expression is considered simplified if there is no fraction in the radicand. Let's have example the square root of the fraction 6 over 3. So when we divide the 6 by 3, so we'll get this square root of 2. So this is now the simplified form. A radical expression is considered simplified if there is no radical in the denominator. Example is 3 over the square root of 6x. As we can see here, we have a radical in the denominator. And this is the topic of our today's video. How do we rationalize the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator is the process of converting a fraction with a radical in the denominator to an equivalent fraction whose denominator is an integer. Let's have example 1. Rationalize the fraction 3 over the square root of 6x. In here, we're going to use the property when we have the nth root of a 
and this radical is squared this is simplified into a so let's go to our problem here the step is we're going to multiply this by a value equal to 1 so we know that any number multiplied by 1 will not change the value of the original expression the next is we're going to show that this one is a fraction please remember that our goal here is to remove this radical in this denominator so there is a clue that we will multiply the square root by itself it means in this denominator we're going to use that same value of the square root of 6x and for the numerator we're going to copy that same denominator so this is square root of 6x over the square root of 6x is a value that is equal to 1 then let us proceed we're going to multiply this 3 by this square root of 6x we'll just combine them here and multiplying this square root of 6x by itself we will get this value the square of this quantity square root of 6x and then on the next step we can now use the idea of this property we can now cancel that square root and the power 2 so this is now 6x in the denominator in the numerator we'll just copy that same value 3 square root of 6x but we can see here that the numbers 3 and the 6 can still be simplified we can cancel the 3 and the 6 so the 3 becomes 1 the 6 becomes 2 so in the denominator it becomes 2x in the numerator it is 1 but that number 1 we will not write it anymore so only the square root of 6x comes here so our final answer the square root of 6x over 2x let's have example 2 rationalize the fraction 5 over the binomial 2 minus the square root of 3 so for this binomial our aim is to remove the radical in the denominator we're going to use the product of conjugate pattern what does it mean when we have the x plus y multiplied by the x minus y these two binomials here are conjugate of one another to explain further the conjugate of x plus y is the x minus y and vice versa and this is one of our special product that when we multiply the answer will be the square of the first term then minus the square of the second term so let us proceed with our solution our first step is to show that we are going to multiply this fraction by a value equal to 1 and this value equal to 1 is a fraction and then we're going to think of our numerator and denominator here for the denominator we're going to multiply this value by its conjugate we simply copy that same first term 2 we copy that second term the square root of 3 but the minus here we're going to put the opposite sign plus in some problems it may happen that this is positive so you must write negative the next is the numerator we'll just simply copy the conjugate value so when this numerator and denominator are equal this value is equal to 1 so it's not changing the value of our original fraction the next is 
we're going to multiply now the numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. In the numerator, the number 5 is multiplied to the binomial. We'll just put them together. The 5 times the 2 plus the square root of 3. In the denominator, we're going to apply now our special product. So, the first term, 2, is now copied and then raised to 2. Then minus. The square root of 3 is copied and also raised to 2. In the next line, we're going to simplify our denominator. So it means the numerator, we simply copy here. In the denominator, the 2 square becomes 4 and then minus. The radical will be cancelled along with that power 2. Only the radicand 3 will come down here. So this is 4 minus 3. So when we simplify further, the 4 minus 3 becomes 1. And the same denominator is here. And for the final answer, we simply remove that denominator 1. So this is our final answer. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.